Hey guys, welcome to Credit 3 Day 4. Uh, we're going to start here on page 16. And uh, this first practice here says open your Declaration of Independence modified Word document. So I'm going to browse to my flash drive here. I'm going to click on Word Projects and I'm going to click on Declaration of Independence modified. All right, now it says add a header in 14 point times New Roman font. All right, all right. So uh, adding a header is pretty easy here. First thing you'll notice is my uh, white space is hidden. So just double click to show white space. I'm gonna double click. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna double click in the area where the header's supposed to go. Boom, look at that, I got my header option. Okay, now it says add a header in 14 points. It says, say you want a revolution. All right, I'm gonna center it so it looks nice. And I'm going to type, Say you want a revolution. All right. This is a reference to the people, uh, in case you guys were wondering. And it's just kind of silly, but it's just to give you guys some practice uh, adding headers to things. All right. Uh, now it says add a page number at the bottom of each page. Okay. So we're going to have to go to the footer now and insert the page number. Now, uh, we're going we're gonna to have uh, design options here, and we're going to go to header and footer tools, and we're going to add page number right here. We're going to add it at the bottom of the page, and I want it over to the side there like that because that looks nice, but you can add it anywhere you like. Some people like it in the middle, whatever. So I'm going to add it like that. All right. Uh, and then lastly, it says hit tab and in the footer type well, you know, we all want to change the world. All right. Well, you know, we all want to change the world. Boom. All right. And again, that's the rest of that Beatles, uh, Beatles song. Uh, it's just silly, but again, it shows you how to um, add a header and a footer. And again, these are both... Uh, I've centered both of them just to make them look nice. In fact, this one I'm going to go back here. I'm going to backspace it, and I'm going to go here and hit the center, actually, so it's perfectly centered and looks nice. Now look what happens. When I click out of here, we've got the header and the footer at uh, uh, on every single page. And what will happen is they'll change the page number as you go through the document which is very convenient. They'll automatically number it for you. Now, headers and footers are really useful if you want to add a title um, that you want to have it appear on every single page. This is useful. Uh, it might be useful to me if I'm creating curriculum and I want to make sure the top of every single page says the name of uh, the curriculum that uh, I'm working on. Uh, they do this in books a lot, reference books or your, your school book. You'll see them use this. So it's good. It helps your reader identify where they're at as far as the page number goes, but then also what document they're reading. Uh, so you might do this if you broke stuff up into separate chapters or something like this. You might have everything say chapter 13 at the top of it or something like that. All right, so that's how you do that. Okay, guys, and the next task, which we find at the top of page 17, is to uh, open our Declaration of Independence document, which we already have, and then select Insert Pen. All right, and then we're going to choose an online picture of an eagle. Okay, so we're going to go to online pictures here, and I'm going to search for a cool picture of an eagle. Boom. All right. Now, you see down here it says uh, these are item uh, licensed under Creative Commons, which means it's okay for you to use them. You're not going to be infringing anyone's copyright if you do. Now, what you can do is kind of scroll over them, and what they'll do is you see down here at the bottom, if you select one of them, it gives you the resolution of the image. Now, if I was to go with something like this image here, look at how small that resolution is. That's not going to look very good. Uh, it's always better to get a high-resolution picture and make it smaller as opposed to getting a low-resolution picture and trying to make it bigger, because if you get a low-res picture and make it bigger, it gets all grainy and doesn't look good. So I'm going to select this picture. This is Big old high resolution picture, and I'm going to insert it. There we go. All right. Now, the next instructions say change the picture size so it is exactly two and a half inches. Okay, see the height up here? I'm going to click and I'm going to change this to 2.5. And 
I'm going to hit enter. There we go. All right, now lastly, it says change the text wrapping to square and put the picture in the exact center of the page. I think we go here. I'm going to go to square and I'm going to move it to the exact center of the page. You see how I get a line right there to tell me it's centered? And then I'm going to move it up the page and I should get a green line here. Let me move this a little bit. And I should get another green line telling me I'm in the, oh, there we go, exact center of the page there. All right, now there's an easier way to do this. We can just go to position and hit right here, and it'll put it in the exact center for us, uh, but you can also do it by hand, and Word will kind of help guide you in with those, those uh, lines there. All right, and that's it for that. That's how you insert a picture into Word, uh, change the options, and if you want to get back to those picture options, you just click on the picture, and look, see how picture tools automatically pop up. So they'll hide themselves while you're you you're not you haven't selected the picture. But as soon as you click on it, you get those picture tools options again. And you just click on that little uh, red tab right there to bring them up. All right, that's it for the picture. All right, and we're going to save this in the same location with the same name. So we're just going to hit that save button again. We're going to exit out of here. Now, if we go to the bottom of page 17, it asks us to open a new Word document. And insert a school appropriate picture of your choice. And I say school appropriate just so nobody puts anything stupid and inappropriate up there. You've been warned. But you can literally choose any picture of your choice. Because uh, what you're going to do is just play around with the picture format a little bit. If I'm going to insert a picture, you can either go online and search for something, or if you have one on your, your computer already, you can choose it. Uh, so I'm going to choose one of the pictures off of my computer. I'm going to choose this big pile of cash here. That's cool. All right. And I'm going to stretch it out. You see how I grab that in the corner there and stretch it out to make it bigger? And what that does is it keeps the same uh, dimensions, uh, or rather the same ratios between the dimensions. If you grab one side of it and pull, see how it kind of distorts the image? That's because you're not keeping the ratios the same. I'm going to hit Control-Z to undo that. So if you're, you're, uh, you want your pictures to maintain looking the way they're supposed to, make sure you click and drag at one of the corners and don't click and drag it on the sides so much because it tends to screw them up quite a bit. All right, so pull out the picture so it covers the whole page, and that's what I was just doing there. I was making this sucker as big as possible. And uh, I can actually change my page layout here. If I want to, I can go to margins and make them narrower if I want to be able to fit it on more of the page. So I'm going to do it like that. I'm going to let go, and that's enough of the page. It doesn't have to cover literally the whole page. And now it says change the shape to anything you'd like. Okay, so here I can go here to format, and I can actually insert a shape over it. And do that by going to crop, and then crop the shape. So I'm going to change it so that it's this triangle shape right there. Oh, I just cropped it to shape, right? Uh, then it says add a colored border. Okay, so again. In my, my picture options, I can go here and I can add a picture border. I go here, I'm going to just put a black border around it. And I'm going to make that, I don't, you don't, can't really see the black border, so I'm actually going to make that bigger. I'm going to go to weight, and I'm going to go to a thicker line. I'm going to go to a six-point line, so you actually see that line right there. Um, to add an artistic effect, I'm going to click on again, I'm going to go to artistic effects. Look at all this different stuff I can do to it. I can make it all weird and pixely. I can distort it like this. I'm going to go with this one. I'll use this one because you can still kind of tell what it is. It's kind of funky. Okay. Uh, and then you can modify the, uh, the colors if you like. You can uh, blur stuff. So there's all different ways you can change the picture. Oh, sorry, not change that picture. I'm sorry. Artistic effects. So you can go to artistic effect options and get even crazier with it if you want to. Add a colored glow to it. Uh, see, I just added a colored glow around the outside. You've got about a million different options here to mess with. You can go to correction and mess around with your, your brightness and contrast. Um, so you've got a, a bunch of different stuff you can do to have fun and make images kind of unique and interesting. Um, and then, of course, you just insert them right in the middle of your Word document, and uh, it creates kind of an interesting effect, and it makes it more interesting for, your, uh, for the person who's reading the, the document. All right, now after you're done, you're going to save it to your flash drives, Word Project Projects folder, and picture modified. So I'm going to go here, save as. I'm going to go to computer, browse to my flash drive here. I'm going to go to Word Project, and I'm going to save it as picture modified. There we go.
are we doing? Click the modify. Back to uppercase. And that's that, guys. I hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching.